Hi, my name is Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the latest explosive claims from the short-serving chair of the post office who's claiming he was sacked as a sacrificial lamb to cover for Tory ministers. In fact, he makes a number of uh, fairly remarkable claims which, if true, suggest that the Tories, when faced with the reality of the abuse of post office workers, chose to side with the abusers against the victims. It certainly demands an investigation and even the accusations will add another layer of enmity towards the Tories. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So as a little aside, in the past, I've said, look, you know, there's various problems with the Conservatives waiting longer and longer before calling the general election. And I've said one of them is that their chickens are just going to keep coming home to roost. The scandals are going to keep happening. And this is one of those cases. You know, when I've discussed the post office scandal in the past, I have made my position really clear. It was caused by people at the post office and within Fujitsu. It was clear that ministers of various parties were lied to. So when the scandal actually broke, when it became clear that, oh, it was the post office executives lying to us, not the postmasters, there was no need for any political party to want to cover up because it was not a reflection on them as long as they didn't cover themselves in the same mud. I've also expressed sympathy even for the current Conservative government in trying to deal with the fallout. It was a hell of a mess. You couldn't let appeals take place as normal because it would take, I mean, what is it, another 20 years I think it's believed to take. People can't wait that long to see justice. Mind you, the Tories do take some of the blame for that indirectly because they have allowed the court system to collapse on their watch. But at the same time, a blanket pardon risks undermining the independence of the judiciary. So there were no good options. All very messy. And the root of it is not the fault of any individual ministers now dealing with it or even former ministers or any political party. Not least Kemi Badnock, who only became a cabinet minister just over a year ago. She had absolutely no need of scapegoats. And if she felt the need to have people carry the can so that people didn't blame the government, why not make those actually responsible take the fall? But according to the Sunday Times yesterday, when Badnock sacked the post office chair, who only took up his position in 2022, he was not to blame for the scandal itself, which had already been publicly exposed at the time, she told him, well, somebody's got to take the rap for this. Needless to say, Badnock's team is denying that this was said. They're trying to turn it into a, well, he said, she said. But the revelations do bear inquiry because it was not just the nature of his sacking that he's gone public with. He's claimed that he was told to stall compensation for the victims of the scandal so that the government could, quote, limp to the election with the lowest possibility for lowest possible financial liability. Staunton also claims that the government wanted to put out the story that the reason so few sub postmasters were getting compensation, because people will say, well, what's going on with the compensation? Why is not much being paid out? They were trying to put out this story, according to him, that it's because most of them were actually guilty, that there were, there were just a few innocent people caught in the net. Now, even the notion that the government might have been trying to continue with the line that the post office executives were pushing a decade ago would be to suppose that the Tories, rather than being angry at those responsible for the crisis, adopted a position in alignment with those executives and against the innocent ordinary workers. Now, this is a very Tory thing to do, admittedly, but if true, completely unnecessary and utterly stupid. But if it is true, and these are just allegations at the moment, of course, then it means the Tories, after a certain point, cannot claim that they were being lied to and they actually decided to consciously join forces with the liars. The Times article also published the claim that the former chair there, uh, that there remains a, a toxic culture within the post office whereby executives who are presumably relatively new there now and are not part of the scandal, so they're free from the taint of it all, nonetheless do not trust their postmasters, despite the absolute proof that the convictions were largely unsafe. So you have this now culture whereby people at either ends of the sort of service, if you like, don't trust each other. You can't run an effective organisation like that. 
And if any of this is true, it would have been completely unnecessary from the point of view of the Tories. As soon as the scandal became exposed, they had no need to try to suppress it. Indeed, they could have won a lot of public support in coming down on those responsible like a ton of bricks and instantly siding with the victims. It especially makes no sense for current ministers who were not ministers at the time or even MPs. Kemi Badnock was not even an MP when the scandal was going. It makes no sense for them to have covered up for others. And sacking Staunton, which if Badnock really wanted someone to carry the can, was absolutely the wrong person to blame, given that he had no role in the post office of any kind while the damage was actually being done. That could bite the Tories on the arse. His claims alone would warrant an independent investigation. Now, now that it's clear that the public have been alerted to the scandal, the Tories could be making a huge mistake here. If the government do not wrap up management of the Horizon Post Office scandal, if they do try to limp towards the election, not doing very much and leave it all for Labour, well, that basically invites the Labour government to order an independent inquiry into all aspects of it. If what Staunton says is true, it has the capacity to destroy some Tory reputations. Imagine if the Conservatives make bad knock their leader and then she ends up being hammered by that investigation. Because consider what's going to happen with Labour in power. First of all, no matter when the election is, the COVID inquiry will still be rumbling on and it will be examining PPE procurement next year. So even if they delay the election until like January 2025, COVID inquiries examining PPE procurement, which is arguably the biggest Tory scandal of them all, when Labour in power. And that Labour government will not be holding back on handing over whatever documents the inquiry want. Then there's the public inquiry into HS2, which Labour are going to launch. That's going to turn up a lot of Tory skullduggery as well. So putting themselves in the position of giving Labour a chance to batter the reputation of the Conservatives over the post office scandal as well is the stuff of madness, particularly when it's going to be ministers who were not even ministers or MPs at the time the, the, the scandal really was taking place. The fact that they perpetuated the scandal is madness. And yet by failing to deal with all the outstanding claims for justice from the victims before the election, that's exactly what the Tories are doing. They are inviting Labour to deal with it. It's like, here's your mess, enjoy it. To which Labour really should just say, well, we don't fancy dealing with it. We'll just get a public inquiry to sort it out. You know, when a party loses power, it, it generally uses its time in opposition to try and rebuild its reputation. It doesn't always do it effectively to begin with. They usually have a little bit of a meltdown first. But we may end up with a situation whereby the Tories actually do more harm to their reputation once they're in opposition. But even before the election and a possible in independent investigation, these claims are being reported now. If Badnock and the Tory government in general wants to avoid being blamed for the injustices that continued even after the scandal became public, they're going to have to do a great deal more than just deny everything. I'm not convinced the public really consider politicians to be all that honest at the best of times, let alone the Tories right now. But the likes of Sunak, you see, as, assuming he is intended to call the election in May, he can just, uh, you know, he can just carry on through then. He can let this ride until then. There's not going to be a major, you know, blowback for him before then. But Kemi Badnock sees a long-term future in Parliament. She wants to be the next Tory leader. That's going to be tricky if she takes personal flack from this. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.